Hi guys, so welcome back to the channel. Um, it's normally Harlow and Popcorn, um, but today you have me. So I'm Harlow's mum, Chelsea. You might have seen me in not very many of the videos, but yes, um, I do need to get on here a little bit more, but I just haven't had time. I've just been focusing on Harlow. Um, but yes, yeah, so today Harlow is at school and she's going on a camping trip for a couple of days. And as you can tell by the title or the thumbnail of this video, it's something really important. So I'm here today, Harlow can't be here. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna share with you what's been going on with Popcorn and he's not very well. Um, he hasn't been for a, a little while. We've had a bit of an on off summer with him and there's been a, a few problems or problems we can't quite, quite work out what's going on. And like now we're finally getting to the bottom of it. We're pretty sure what's the matter with him. But I feel like with any pony that you buy, you don't quite know for sure what, like we had pops, uh, popcorn five stage vetted and there's so many things that you're not gonna be able to pick up on. And it, to be honest, it wouldn't have been a problem even if I knew about what was the matter, it wouldn't have been a problem. Like we'd had him, have him anyway. And regardless of whatever is the matter with him, we're gonna keep him regardless and forever. So. There's no worries that we're like, oh, if this is not right, we need to sell him on or anything like that. It's like, he's here for good. Um, and we just want to do the absolute best that we can for him and get to the bottom of it and get him better. So when we first got him, we had the saddle refitted straight away because um, Harlow's instructor at the time was like, oh, that saddle looks really tight on his shoulders. Like you need to get that looked at. So we did, we had a saddle fit come out and and then we thought like that was done and dusted, like problem sorted. And then we went over the, for the re rest of the summer with that saddle. And then um, you would have seen in a couple of the videos that Popcorn bucked. So the Popcorn's girlfriend vlog, he bucked, did like a really, really big buck. And then he's kind of done like these little rodeo things. It's actually in the intro, the rodeo, which he kind of did that straight away anyway, um, only at cross country and we just thought it's excited and it's really harmless and it's just like little bunny hops. He does like three in a row, but never any bucks. And then about six weeks ago, about four, just over a month ago, um, Harlow, we didn't film it, um, but Harlow was like cantering around the fields at the stables and Popcorn did three massive, massive bucks and Harlow fell off and she was like mortified and she was like why is he bucking like he this is just not him because she knows those little bunny hops were just like he's excited and he's having fun but these big bucks are just really out of character for him so we then I started panicking. I'm thinking, right, something's really wrong. Um, he's always been girthy, and I spoke to his old owners, not the person that we bought him from, but I've spoken to his old owners. They had him, so he's 15 now, and they had him from the age of three to 12, so they know him really, really well, and they know all of his history, and they were completely honest, and they told me everything. Well, there wasn't actually anything to say. She, she just, they just said that popcorn has always been a character when you do up his girth, um, but that has just got progressively worse. So now, when you do up his girth, he will like like turn around to try and bite you. He like stomps out and um, with his leg. Um, so it's just got worse and worse uh, over the, the the last part of the summer, and then. Um, Oh, and then what happened? Oh, and then he's like feeling like very uncomfortable when you groom him, which is totally unlike him. If you see all the beginning, the videos from the beginning of the channel, or just all of them really, he's like loves being groomed. He will stand there for hours. He won't move. Like we don't even tie him up when he's being bathed. He just stands there. And then now he's like, when you're trying to brush him, you go near his back or belly or that kind of area. He's really not happy about it and he'll let you know. And then um, the physio came out um, because we was thinking, well, you know, what's, what's going on here? So the physio came out and she was like, he's very back sore. That's probably due to the saddle being not fitted properly and it's very badly fitted. And I was like, we just had it fitted in April. So you thought, I thought that it was perfect. So she was like, no, they've done a really terrible job with it because I got someone new this time. She done a really terrible job of it. Um, this is what the physio said, you need to get someone out ASAP. 
So then I got the saddle fitter out again, another one, and she was like, yeah, the, the saddle is fitted terribly. Um, I'll take it away. I need to completely give it a rehaul and start again with it. So, and I'm not really, really worried about that saddle because it's a saddle that he came with and I do want to get him another saddle, but it's actually finding the one that will suit him best. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of problems, but the main thing that he's got something that he's comfortable with. So I was like, yeah, take the saddle away and see what you can do with it and if you can make it fit. And since then, I've also got a new saddle. Um, it's like a treeless one and it molds to their back. I'll show you it a little bit later. And so we're gonna see how that one goes as well. So hopefully he's gonna have some options in a minute, um, but he can't be ridden at the moment. So this is the reason for the video um, because we're gonna find, we're gonna get to the bottom of it today because it's not just saddle related and yeah, he's actually going to have a scope today to have a camera put down his like throat. Um, I'll show you how it goes. It's not going to be very nice. He hasn't had any food all night. Um, but when the physio came back for a checkup, she wanted to see how he was. She did like a trot up with him and she said he's lame in his hind leg. So I was like, oh my God, he's lame. And I was thinking, oh, is it because he's, he's done this? Because he's done that? Like, I was like, my mind was doing overtime, like why he was possibly lame. And then the vet came out. So I called the vet out to do like a lame, a full lame check testing. And they said, this was about a, five days later. And after the physio said that he was lame. So then the vet came and said, no, he's not lame in the hind anymore, but he's slightly lame in the front. Um, so, it's all to, like I think everything is related. I think it's all going to be related to one problem, which is what we're going to find out today. Um, but it's just, just not very nice. It's not very nice for Harlow as well that she's had this really, really placid pony that will let you do anything you want with him. And then now he's he's grumpy. He has been very, very grumpy. Like he's really, really out of character. He's obviously unhappy. So she hasn't ridden him for the last nearly three weeks now. And you'll see in the videos soon. So we always run a little bit behind with the videos. I'll get this one up soon because I want to just address everything that's going on. And you'll know why you haven't seen loads. So when she goes to a cross country um, event, she doesn't take him. She has to take another pony. Um, and then at the time we thought it was just because popcorn was lame, but it's not. There's more to it. Um, so yeah, I want to get this video up first so you can know what's going on and I'll let you know how long we think Popcorn's going to be out of action for, what's the plan, what's his treatment um, and yeah, and just hopefully he's going to be back on the mend really soon. Um, but yeah, I'm not just, yeah, we'll see. So fingers crossed today, it's not too bad, but we get an answer and we can get him better and get him nice and happy. Um, yeah, so the vet should be here in a minute actually, in the next five minutes. So I'll go and show you popcorn now. He's in his stable, so he, because he's having the camera down his neck, um, his throat, he's, um, it's called a scope. He hasn't eaten all night, so he's looking a little bit sad in the stable, which is really sad. Um, yeah, so he hasn't eaten since last night. He's been completely starved. Um, he's had his water taken away now as well, so he's not drunk. I think, don't think they can drink for a couple of hours before they have the scope done. Um, yeah, so that's all going to happen in a minute. And I should be able to show you guys the camera. You can see inside his stomach as well, and you can see what's going on. Um, but yeah, I also thought that it would be really useful for any of you guys that horses might have had similar symptoms or be going through something or just so you know that horses do get problems and they do have to have some out downtime and when you can't ride them and Harlow also has to like she's been amazing about it she's been so good um but yeah they I, I was really lucky when I was younger I had a pony who like never seen the vet he was incredible um never went lame he just, he just he obviously had his jabs and stuff and his teeth done but I'd never ever had to call the vet and I had him for years and years well I had him from the age of like um 11 till I was like in in my mid-20s and so yeah he was brilliant but yeah, some pop ponies are like really problematic and they have to have the vet out all the time. And Popcorn, this is the first time we've actually, he would have seen the vet for a problem like with us. So hopefully it's nothing too serious, but um, I think he's definitely gonna be out for 
you know, out of work and can't be ridden for the next few weeks while he recovers. Um, if I think it is what I think it is. And I don't want to self-diagnose either. And it's always best that you get the vet out and you find out exactly what the problem is and you don't guess. Um, and yeah, get him on the right treatment plan. So yes, wish us luck. Um, I'll show you everything. And yeah, let's go see popcorn. So let's have a look at popcorn. Oh, it's a very dirty popcorn, aren't you? So yeah, he's gonna be very hungry. I'm gonna try and get, so you can see what he's like. Can you see that he's very uncomfortable with me touching him? He's actually filthy, I've never seen him this early before. We really need to clip him, but there's, oh, oh you need to try to bite my hand off then. Um, because he's going to be out of work for possibly a few weeks, there's actually no point clipping him. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll do it in a couple of weeks. So he, you know, if he does get back into work soon, then he's like all nice and ready and not so hairy. But Harlow would be mortified if she was here right now. She, he's got grass stains here, here, here. This is from yesterday. He's got shavings all over him. Oh, popcorn, you don't look your best. He's not feeling his best either. But hopefully we'll change that soon and he'll be feeling how he was, basically. So yeah, vet should be here any minute. This is what it says outside a stable. It's actually fell in this water bucket. Don't give popcorn anything to eat or drink. Vet coming, 10 a.m. Boy, so yeah, so after um, he's going to be sedated, <clears throat> he's going to be sedated to have the scope done, and then I have to wait for that to wear off before he can then start eating again. So it's not even like he can eat instantly, I have to wait for it to him, him to like to be back to normal, then he'll go out on the field. Um, and it's a really nice day today, so he's missing out on the sunshine, um, but it's all worth it just to have to know what's going on and to not have to guess. So, oh, this might be the vet now, actually. Oh, yeah, I think it is. I feel so sorry for him. He's wondering why he's not going out to play. Oh, bless him. Oh, my God. He knew this when we go on our hack. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Bit of a whizzy one, aren't you? Very. <laughs> oh, he's such a good boy. Good boy, good boy darling. I've seen all this well behaved. I know. <laughs> if you tuck his chin again. Um, there we go. Good boy. Good boy, girl. We're just on our way down to the stomach, and I think Where we should be there now because it's quite little. <laughs> right. <laughs> When you're fitting it in, make sure you're holding it down here and it's going in a straight line. Okay. So you have to loosen your thumb just a little bit to put it in. You don't want to be threading it in from up yeah. here or down there. Yeah, you want straight. it passing straight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so we're still just in, in the end of his esophagus. So if you go ahead and um, thread some more scope in there, you should nearly be there. Right. So if you pull the scope out maybe by about five centimeters, can you see any ulcers yet? Nothing Keep yet. Keep going. So, uh, yeah, just ever so slightly. What we're going to do, we're going to start right at the entrance of the stomach. Yeah, keep coming back, keep coming back. Okay, stop there. Nope. <laughs> uh, you can go like two centimeters in. In. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So. Well done, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, so we're literally, we've just popped in through the cardia. It's because it is forward. <laughs> Aww. This isn't so bad. And it really isn't. It's not. Um, <laughs> it looks really okay with it. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to kind of crawl along um, this area here, which is the margopicata. So the top of the stomach is um, squamous mucosa or your non-glandular mucosa. And then the bottom here is your glandular mu mucosa, which is actually the bit that kind of like secretes your um, gastric juices and everything. So, so far the top portion of the stomach looks okay, but we need to have a look at a few more areas. Um, just to check that it's all fine. Ooh, actually stop there. 
because that is exactly what we want to see. Too far, too far. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> little that, like, I think you're kind of there, and then suddenly, oh, blink and you okay. miss it. Hold on. Ah, we fell in. Hold on. Let me see if I can just rescue us a little bit. Did you see something a minute ago? Um, there were a few little bits. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the lesser curvature. Going in. Lovely, keep going. Lovely. Oops, stop there just for okay, go ahead. Good. Okay, stop there. Cool. Mm. Mm, yeah. Alright, keep going. Yep. Keep going. Yep. Keep going. Okay, stop there. And then we should, there we go. So this is looking at his lesser curvature. And he actually does have some ulcers right along there. Mm. So we'll take a photo of those. So you can see, like, literally these dot, dot, yeah. dot, dot, dot. Those are all ulcers. That's our scope coming in the stomach. I mean, they're not horrendous. They're not the worst that I've ever seen. Um, but it's certainly it's enough. enough. Us, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's enough to cause yeah, the it, discomfort that he's yeah. in. There's a bit of a spectrum when it comes to some horses seem they to They can be, deal with it. And yeah, to deal with it really well. Mm. And some horses, you can have the tiniest thing. But I mean, these are erosions here. So this has kind of, it's almost like grazing the skin off your finger. Um, and I guess if the acid splashes yeah. on the yeah, then it's going to really? be quite painful. Okay, so the next place that we're going is we're going right in this little hole there. Um, now before we go in, I am just going to inflate his stomach a little bit more. Are they like just tiny weeny ones? Like, um, I mean, they look quite small on the screen, but the area we're looking at is probably about that long. Mm. Oh, so it's about that much yeah. of ulcers. Okay. Yeah. So they're kind of spread along that sort of area. But yeah, they'll be kind of, each ulcer is going to be sort of like that big so it is a significant mm. um yeah it's definitely a significant amount of space um we will fall into that fluid but that is fine oh actually Ooh, stop wow oh we have that on video Nate. let me just stop that video and then start again because that, that was quite a good was, um yeah see something else did you more. no just wow. that it gave us a really good view of those Around ones here. there oh yeah all along there cool okay so go ahead and go forward Oh, good, that's fine. We're swimming, swimming is okay. So actually, I think this is going to be the far more significant area for him. So you can see all yeah. of these marks along the there. So those oh, yeah. are all ulcers. Oh. Um, so I'm going to just inflate a little bit here. It's so weird how you can see it. I'm like moving. <laughs> yeah, I like to. Oh, yeah, so that's his pylorus, so that's the exit to his stomach. That's some bile that's just come through from the proximal um, duodenum. There's some more bile. Let's feel so that'll be sometimes. stinging every time. Yeah, so, yeah, so that, again, they, they are not the worst ulcers I've seen, but they're definitely enough. Hmm. Um, and actually these right here in the foreground, Ooh, yeah. those they're are some more chronic bigger. lesions. Oh. Can you, if you just pull Ooh. the scope out again, about two centimeters? So those raised ones. Yeah. Yeah, just so like they like pussy yeah. spots. Don't Come they? a little bit out, a little bit further. Yeah. Okay. Stop there. Yeah. So that's yeah. all quite relevant. Mm. Um, so these are all pyloric ulcers here. Okay. What we're going to do um, before we come too far out, if you actually go forward again, back forward, he's got quite a bit of movement in his pylorus here. Uh, so we're just going to have to navigate all of these folds, and we're going to try. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, stop there for a second. There we go. Um, we're going to try to pop right through the hole when we have a hole. So go ahead and go forward and we're just going to sit here and wait for a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's been so, it so, so worth doing, isn't it? Yeah. Forward, 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 in, 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 in. Yeah, just keep going. We should, yeah, perfect. Okay, so now we're in his proximal duodenum. Okay, we can kind of come out now. We've seen everything that we need to see. So just slowly come out and you'll see us pop right back out through this pylorus there. Oh, Very good. Cool. I'm gonna open that so he can start 
Um, yeah, and just come straight back out. Ooh. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Slow mo. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then just come out, come out, come out. Lovely. So we're all finished with the vet and popcorn has got ulcers, gastric ulcers, which is what we thought. I didn't want to say earlier because I don't think you should self-diagnose, but he did show all the symptoms of having ulcers, but you can never be sure unless you have a look. So yeah, he, they didn't actually show up straight away and I was like, oh my God, like, are they not ulcers? Uh, what is wrong with him if he hasn't got ulcers? There's something wrong, but I, I don't know what. But yeah, the further they went into the stomach and different parts and stuff, yeah, she was like, yeah, they're there. Um, she said they're not the worst that she's ever seen, but they are bad enough definitely to be causing him some discomfort. And then I asked her like, oh, why do you think that he's got them? Like, has he always had them? She said, it's so hard to say. So also what could have brought on these ulcers is like stress um, and something that might be stressful for him, we might not you know, think that's, uh, that's stress at all. Um, like moving house, that is quite a big thing. So when we bought him, he moved to a yard, but we was only there for like seven weeks. And then I moved him to the current yard that he's at now, uh, Forest Oaks. So yeah, he has had to, two house moves in the last since now we're in September and March um, and even though he's really happy here you know that could have been a stress factor and also he went to um, like a, a camp thing in the summer and I know then that he wasn't quite himself on that week because he wasn't eating his breakfast in the morning he was very quiet so that could also have been like the trigger point um, for him I just never know but the main thing is that we've got to the bottom of it it's not a guessing game and he's on a proper treatment plan and it is a very very structured uh, treatment plans so he's going to be having like an oral paste in the morning he's on a 28 day course and then he's also having um, some medication in his feed and then he's on a supplement for the ulcers as well so he's on three things and they're all very um, particular like you have to feed the first one the, the syringe on an empty stomach and then the other the medication has to be fed twice a day it has to be two hours after the syringe and then yeah the first one has to be done on an empty stomach like it's all very very particular um, but yeah everyone knows here at the yard so yeah everyone's on board and also he has to have like 24 7 hay um so it just be, always be having access to um hay basically so that's going to help and yeah and be, also he's a bit of a quick but Harlow always says he's a hay monster so he's a bit of a quick eater with the hay so what we've done is I've bought him like a greedy feeder hay net so that will just slow him down a little bit otherwise he's just going to be consuming a lot of hay and the last thing is we're changing his feed completely so the vet I'm going to go buy some now actually the vet has advised that he oh I've written it down hold on the vet has advised that we change him to um, a top spec anti-lamb balancer Denji low sugar alfalfa and speedy beet and it's very high fiber um, yeah so that's what we're going to uh, change his feed to so I'm going to go to the uh, feed store in a minute and buy all of those things he'll be on medication so honestly he's he should be feeling in a month's time like he should be like a different pony and he should be the same pony as what when he came um you know he was just so happy and so chilled and so sweet and you see what he was like in the stable as well like he was like trying to bite me all the time and that's just so out of character like he's he's never never bitten um so yeah i can't wait now just to for him to get started well he started already straight away on the uh, medication um and just so he's happy again so he's also popcorn's also going to be re-scoped in 28 days time just to make sure that the ulcers have gone or they're they're going and to then to reassess the you know if he needs to stay on the oral syringes syringes a little bit longer um yeah so we've got to do that in 28 days time oh and the what uh, she said about um, popcorn still doing like being in work or not so 
he can like still do some light work. We're just going to leave him be this week and let the medication kick in so he feels like a little bit better. And then next week, uh, maybe he'll do some lunging, um, a light school work, just to keep him moving and active. I don't want him to lose his muscle completely, but I have seen that he already he's just not looking as good as he normally does. Um, so yeah, he. We won't be taking him anywhere though. We won't be going to any shows and events as much as he loves them. But yeah, we, he just needs to really take it easy now till we get him better. And yeah, I really think, you know, there's no reason why we can't get to the, you know, get him back to how he was now. Now he's, you know, he's in really good hands. The vet was amazing. And yeah, I'm excited that, I'm really glad that we found something today as well because I would have been so worried. Like imagine I've had all these problems and then being like, oh, we've scoped him, but there was no ulcers there. So I don't know why he's behaving like that. So that would have been really, really worrying. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm as bad as it is, I'm actually glad that there was something there because it's treatable and it's, yeah, it's not too hard to treat. With the right stuff, it's not too hard. Um, so, yeah. But I hope you found this vlog interesting and I hope you're not too disappointed that you didn't see Harlow today. I'm sorry about that, but she will be back on the next vlog. And I might join in with her as well. I might jump on the vlogs with her. It's hard because I'm always the one filming, but I've got a really good tripod now, which is gonna help so I can just set it up and yeah film us so yeah i hope you enjoyed today's vlog and yeah we'll get popcorn better soon for you guys so um yeah there'll be plenty more adventures and yeah thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye